Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Dennis. So today we're going to be doing an install of the new Ryzen 3 3100 processor. So we're going to get out of the box, have a quick look at it, we're going to install it, show you how that's all done. And then we're going to go ahead and maybe uh, we'll see some temps and time uh, permitting we'll go beyond and maybe do some benchmarking. So here we go. So we're going to have our first look. So here we are. It's a third gen processor and it's PCIe 4.0 ready. And on the top, it says it's four core, eight thread, 3.9 gigahertz max boost and a 3.6 gigahertz base. You do need a discrete graphics card. It does not have a integrated. So let's get it out of the box. Okay, so they always type the CPU on the left hand side, well, on the side. Okay, we're going to have a look at that after. Of course, but we want to see what does the cooler look like. I'm assuming it's probably the same standard as we've had in the past, but let's check it out. All right, so let's see. So the first thing I notice, it has pre-applied thermal paste. Okay, you guys are always wondering about that. Now, plastic came off, but didn't touch it, so that's a good thing. Plastic is on the inside of the box. Still say they gotta come up with a better method for that, but anyhow. So leave that on, okay, so you can protect what's going on there. I'm sure I'm going right, right here. So that protects this from being touched or anything like that. So we're going to turn it over. This one we can take off. Won't need that again. And it's a very small. Okay. Has kind of the same mounting mechanisms as you would find on some of the earlier uh, Intel stock coolers. All right. So that's going to basically, the only difference is instead of a clip where you push it down and turn it, this is just going to screw into your standoffs on your motherboard so we're going to go ahead um have a little bit more look now it's four pin which is pwm so that's a good start it's not uh, led nothing like that but we're going to get our processor we're going to install it and we'll go from there so a couple more things that does come with it is the instructions for how to install it which of course we don't need at least i don't need uh, now, it's an AM4 socket that you need to install this into, so any AM4 motherboard will accommodate it. The CPU itself has 18 megabyte of cache unlocked, uh, which means we can overclock it a little bit. Okay, so this is the complete look of everything. So when you're installing your CPU, first you need your motherboard. So this is the Gigabyte B450M DS3H. I did a review on it just previously, a couple of videos back. I'll put a link uh, so you can have a look at that if you wish. These are the brackets we need to install them onto. There's little clips here, okay, on each side, and that's where your um, CPU cooler is going to go onto. So the first thing we're going to do is get our CPU out of its package. Okay, be very careful. The last thing you want to do is drop it. Now in this case, this one's pretty cheap compared with uh, what they usually are, so it's not too bad. Avoid touching the surface. Okay, don't touch that. You don't want to get your fingerprints and oil and everything on it. I do recommend um, cleaning it off with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. Okay, you got a little triangle down here. It's a very small. Let me just see if I can focus in on that. Because you got a little triangle right there. Very tiny, hard to see. So anyway, so when you're putting it on, make sure this triangle lines up with the triangle down here. It's marked, you can see the triangle on here. A little hard to see, but basically make sure first, lift up this little handle here. Okay, make sure that's all the way up. Hold this like so. And when you got it in the right spot, it just pops down. Put your handle back down and make sure it goes under that little tab there. All right, so we just push this down. There should be a little resistance, not a lot. And you can just go from there. So the next thing we're going to do, again, I'm going to clean this off just because it looks like it's uh, 
it just looks a little dirty to me for some reason, but I'm sure it's not. Uh, and then we're going to put our cooler on. So you don't have to clean this off. It's just, it's just me being a little overzealous, maybe. So I just took a little bit of rubbing alcohol. Okay, you can see it here. Okay, it's 95% ethanol. Put some on, like I use paper towel, and just, just clean the surface. Okay, that, that way you make sure you got all any particles or anything like that that's on there that nothing's been touched and it's all good to go. Okay, so we're going to get our CPU cooler out of its package. Again, make sure you don't touch the surface here. Now, in this particular case, something I just noticed is because this screws on, um, we have to take these off. And I'll show you why here in just a second. So it's no big deal to take them off. There's two screws on both sides. Okay, so we're just going to kind of careful how we do this right there and then that will just come up now you can now see these little standoffs so this is your back plate okay so those screws, when they go in, are going to go onto that. Right now, it's being held in place by these other two screws, but also the uh, motherboard box. So it's not going to fall down. Now, if you were doing this uh, at an angle or, or after it's already installed, you want to make sure that you need to hold that in place. Otherwise, it'll fall down or fall into your case. So just keep that in mind. So we're going to get these other ones out. Now, make sure you hang on to these. Because if you use a different cooler, you're going to wind up needing them. All right, so keep that in mind as well. So I'm going to zoom in here so you can see that bracket a little more and see our cooler going on. Okay, so now you can see where these are going to screw into. Okay, so it goes lengthwise. So And, of course, that's the way you want it to go. Now, something to keep in mind, depending on how your uh, your memory is, if you have higher memory, you want to turn this logo... Okay, the one right here. Face it the other direction. Okay, so put it on basically like it's upside down. Okay, because that way it'll give you more memory clearance. Plus, it will also be normally um, easier for you to put on for your um, CPU fan so you can connect it. So just line that up. Okay, once we line it up, it's going to go right on. You want to make sure it's over top of those holes. And then you want to start screwing them in diagonally. Okay, so I'll start with this one so you can see. And you don't want to go too much either. Just keep in mind. You just want to get it started. So I'll go diagonally to the other corner. Make sure that one goes in. Do the same thing with this one and the one in the corner here. So once you've got all your screws fastened down, then it's just securing this. So you got a little tab here. Make sure you line it up where your CPU fan uh, header is. See that little tab here? Line the both up. Okay. Once you got them in place, it will just push right back down like that. And then you can tuck these away until you figure out what you want to do with them later on. And that's all there is to installing your CPU cooler onto your CPU. And next thing is going to be putting in our memory. Uh, installing our operating system and all that kind of good stuff and then we'll get back to that and we'll show you some temps and we'll go forward from there okay so we're going to start off with uh, ADA 64 extreme um, we're going to do a system test uh, we're stress tested to see what kind of temperatures we're getting now right now if you look at it you can see how our CPU temperature is at 29 motherboard 28 and of course it's showing our uh, M.2 drive at 27 and all your voltages, uh, CPU fan, which is of course a stock cooler, and all our core voltages, etc. So we're going to start this and let it run for a bit and see what happens with the temps. So start it. You can see it started down here. 
we're going to let that run probably for, oh, at least a good uh, 5, 15 minutes. We'll see. And uh, we'll come back and have a look and see what's going on. See if the temperatures stay where I honestly think it's going to stay. So, now this is on like a, basically like a made up test bench on top of the motherboard. So, keep that in mind. So, it's kind of, there's no fans, it's just open to the atmosphere. So, we'll come back, we'll check it at 5 minutes, we'll check it at 15 minutes, we'll see what's going on. So, I'm going to pause it and we'll see what's going on after that. Okay, I've switched it back to the tab that says temperatures. So, I'm showing it properly here. And one of the things that's coming up is, is saying warning hardware failure detected test stopped. Well, that's all well and good. So it's just not telling me what it was that failed. So I've got to find out. Okay, so I decided that I needed to go in and install all my drivers, everything like that, as most likely that's what's causing the issues. So I'm going in, I'm installing all my Gigabyte software, and then I'm going to rerun these tests. Okay, so I'm running it again, Ada64 Extreme, uh, after I've installed all the software, everything like that. And uh, right now we're sitting at a low of 2732, at a high of 66. Uh, we're going to let it run for about 15 minutes, just to make sure everything is stable now. So, lesson learned, make sure you install all your drivers from your uh, um, system that comes with your system, uh, or go online and do it from there. Either way, make sure your drivers, everything are up to date. Otherwise, it could give you the hardware error that I got. So everything's running fine. I'll pause it. I'll come back at the five minute mark and then we'll check it again at the 15 minute mark and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so we've hit the five and a half minute mark. We're pretty rock steady around 66, 67 degrees and that's under 100% load, just to keep that in mind. So we're stressing the CPU, the GPU, memory, oh, not the memory, uh, FPU and the cache so so far it's going pretty good I'm pretty happy with that considering it's a stock cooler um, so we'll check it again at the 10 minute mark and uh, and the 15 minute mark okay so we're approaching the 10 minute mark here we're at the 10 minute mark now it's staying at 66 67 the stock cooler for this processor is exactly the way I would like to see it Super quiet, couldn't ask for more. Could not ask for more quiet. Well, I could, but you know. <laughs> so we're going to let it run all the way to 50 minutes because so far we're rock stable, no issues. So let that be something that you learn from this, if nothing else, is that this system, without all the drivers and stuff installed, could give you issues and could give you problems. Okay, I installed chipset drivers that came with the CD DVD which is good to see that that's happening. Um, and I will still go into AMD's chipset uh, and, and update it through the AMD.com website just to uh, make sure I got the most current. And same with all the other ones, all the other drivers. But right now, I'm happy with this. 66, 67, 100% load. This will be able to handle pretty much everything. So we're going to see if we can get something else up here and going. Just to test it some more, if I can't, if I don't have time, because I am kind of running short right now to uh, get this video up, um, I will have another video on it, if I don't get it in this one. So stay tuned, keep watching, uh, hopefully I can get a game or something going on here, and then really test the, uh, see how well it's going to do. Okay, so we're at the uh, 14 minutes, uh, 40 seconds, coming up on 15 minutes. Again, it stayed... 66 67 has not wavered at all you can see the chart you see it going across steady and i will say that that is the most stable i have seen a cpu run under 100 percent utilization full load 100 percent test i think since i've been doing this so i am really impressed if quite honest so let's see what else we can uh, test the system with okay so I uh, couldn't find a game that would really put this through its paces the way I wanted it to. So I thought I'd go with something that people have been asking for that to me is more important. So right now I got an 8064 Extreme running a uh, full CPU 100% utilization test. And on the right hand side, we're looking at the VRM. 
So the temperature right now is at 38 degrees. So it's climbed uh, maybe three degrees from when it first started. So I know some people had asked about that and I said I would try and start doing that. Um, so I wanted to put that into this video so you can have a quick look. Uh, we'll let it go for a little bit and just see how, uh, how high it gets. Now if it sits around there, I think for this board, because it's kind of a budget board, um, so it's probably pretty good. I think it's pretty decent. Nothing, uh, certainly nothing to worry about too much. Um, we'll let it run for a little while and we'll check what it gets to after about, uh, we'll say five minutes or so. The other thing to point out is if you're wondering how I did this, I used 8064 Extreme. I went down to a computer motherboard, uh, uh, sorry, computer down to where it says sensor. And on the right hand side, that's where your VRM is going to show up. So it's at 39 now. And we'll let it continue. Something else you can check is uh, you can see where before we did our initial testing, CPU is still setting 66, 67, solid, stable temperatures. Motherboard's at uh, 32. Again, uh, VRMs are staying at 39. Not really any changes there. And you can see our M.2 drive is sitting at 27 degrees, so it's not running hot, not really. And our CPU, GPU, uh, VRM, uh, our RPM speeds, I'll get it right here, and then our voltages. Just, uh, I know people would ask whether that, and I wanted to make sure I showed it. And I'm going to try and continue to show that, and continue to improve. So ask your questions, tell me what you want to see, and if I know how, or if I can figure it out, I will put it in the video. Okay, so we passed the five minute mark, and we're at 40. So we'll climb one more degree, and I'm going to let this run the full um, 15 minutes. So we'll stop it again at 10 minutes, we'll stop it again at 15 minutes. That's a pretty good real world uh, comparison, I believe, and we'll see what happens. Okay, so we're at the 10 minute mark. It really hasn't changed any. Free RMs are still sitting at 40 degrees, or 104 Fahrenheit. Um, CPU is sitting at 67. I'm pretty happy with that. Everything seems to be pretty good. Uh, I think we're just going to call it at that. I don't think it's really going to change much. And um, that'll be it. Hi everybody. So what did we learn from this video? We learned temperatures, uh, how to test the VRMs, um, normal stress testing, all that kind of good stuff. Overall, very stable CPU. Um, temperature stayed really respectable. Uh, even even during like a 100% load testing, um, I'm th this is probably the best CPU actually I've ever tested uh, for me. Um, I'm gonna try and do some comparison testing later on maybe uh, to see how it compares with other CPUs. Although there's lots of videos out there on that if you want to see those. Um, hope that you learned something from this. All the different testing that took place, um, and if I missed anything, let me know. And I'll show it in another video. If you like this video, hit that like. If you don't, you know what to do. Stay tuned for future videos by hitting that notification button. If you're new here, think about subscribing. Stay tuned for the next one. Thanks for watching.